Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and right here we have some white bleached 100% cotton yarn. Uh, it's 113 grams of worsted weight cotton yarn. And today we are going to dye this with some leftover Kool-Aid powder. I use these for some speckling projects and there's still a fair amount of purple and red food coloring left. Now, we know that acid dyes do not work well to dye cotton fibers. However, when I filmed an FAQ video many years ago, I did see the cotton take up some staining. And if you've ever spilled cherry Kool-Aid on a white shirt or given your kids some popsicles with some light clothing, you know that food coloring can stain cotton fibers. So let's see the extent and the how these these dyes will stain this fiber on the stovetop. I have pre-soaked this yarn in just plain tap water overnight, but I think that you could do a shorter period of time, um, 30 minutes or so should get the fibers completely saturated. In my pot, I have probably six cups of water, maybe a little bit more. And now we are gonna add these Kool-Aid powders. That was some grape. We've got some pink lemonade, which ultimately won't make a huge difference. That doesn't have as much food coloring in it. I've got some black cherry. Oh, that one had taken some humidity. Uh, some cherry cherry. And I think I'd used all that blue raspberry lemonade. All right. There's a little bit more powder left in my bowl. So I am <laughs> using this and I probably could put gloves on. It's kind of stuck to it a bit, but. So you can see there is a lot of food coloring in here. Um, it's sort of like a, re a rich, deep red color. And because I've put my fingers in, I've actually stained my hands slightly. The reason why I am pointing this out is that there's a lot of dye in here. Now, I'm gonna take our cotton yarn, which still has a lot of water in it, and you can see that I even transferred a little color from my fingers. But I'm gonna add this directly to the pot. Um, the pot, I just turned the heat on when we started filming. Um, and you see if I squeeze the water out, it does look like that there's some color. I do expect there to be some light color to remain. I don't expect it to be even, and I don't expect it to be particularly vibrant. But, um, oh, I think the white balance is off because it's looking orange on camera. But it's more of like a brick sort of brick tone medium red right now. But anyway, I'm gonna bring this to a low simmer and then come back. We are now at a low simmer, so I am going to reduce the heat. Um, I do see some e unevenness um, right off the bat, but I am very intrigued. How much? Huh, there's still a fair amount of color in the pot. More color is coming into the yarn than I expected. Uh, but, huh, I wish I had measured the amount of Kool-Aid. Uh, oh, I could have weighed the powder or something. Anyway, I'm gonna keep this at, you know, a low simmer, just below a low simmer. And I'm gonna let this go for 30 minutes and we'll see just how much color we got in the yarn. It has been a half hour and there hasn't really been much change to the depth of color that we see on our yarn. So I am now going to add some 100 grams of 100% wool yarn to the pot to soak up any of the remaining color. Get a slotted spoon ready. I know this will be tight volume wise but 
Actually, maybe I should sort of flip this. There we go. Put the wool on the bottom and the cotton on top. And already the, the dye bath is starting to clear. It is very, very crowded. Um, the decision to add the wool yarn was sort of a last minute one. And certainly the coloration on that wool yarn is going to be really uneven. If I had put them in the pot at the same time, the wool would have just soaked up most of the color and we wouldn't have seen as much on the cotton. All right, but I'm now at this stage, I think, there's still a little color left. The reason why I didn't just remove the cotton yarn entirely at first was that see, there's still some like color dripping out of it. So I wanted to try to take advantage of as much of that residual color as I could. But now, now that we've added this wool, the dye pot is clear. But there is, see, some color coming out of this cotton. So let me see if I can comfortably handle it yet. Not quite. I'm like squeezing it from these tongs, letting the color sort of go down. So what I'm going to do is sort of add this cotton yarn on top of the wool. Um, and I'm going to turn off the pot and let this cool. What this is going to do is let, you know, some of the extra color in the cotton yarn might diffuse out and the wool might soak some of it up or not, but, um, <laughs> but I just want to show you that even after dyeing in the cotton, look at how dark that piece of wool is compared to the color we see in the cotton. Um, you can get really, really rich saturated colors with wools. Um, it does look like currently we have all over color in the cotton, but I expect this to lighten because I expect some to rinse out. So now I'm just going to let this cool and then we'll start washing the yarns. I ended up letting these yarns sit in the pot overnight. And on the cotton we sort of have this peachy pink, orange, oh, slightly orange pink color. But in the wool yarn that we added later we have this deep, deep rose pink and some lighter patches as well. But there is significantly more color on the wool yarn, which again, we added second. But this is to be expected because acid dyes dye wool really well and merely only stain cotton. But now, and you can see there, there's no color left in the pot. But now we're gonna go wash these. And I'm going to start by washing the wool so we can see what, if any, bleeding there is. And then I'm going to wash the cotton separately so we can get a sense of how much color remains. I love kettle dyed yarn. Uh, wool of the Andes, which is this worsted weight yarn, 100% Peruvian Highland wool, is one of my favorite yarns to dye. It takes up color absolutely beautifully. Now, one thing I'll add right now is that even though we're seeing no color bleeding at all, I can smell the Kool-Aid that we use. And so this is one reason why we might need to do a couple extra rinses. There happen to be other things in the pot besides just the dye and citric acid. I'm going to use a little bit of clear dish soap, which again, should show us nicely if we are experiencing any color bleeding. If I use the colored soap, it would be a little hard to tell if uh, things were adjusted by the soap color itself. The water is a bit translucent. Um, even cut, you know, it's not, I think, perfectly clear. Uh, this is something that I tend to see from citric acid and dying with Kool-Aid or candy or something in general. But I'm not seeing any bleeding. All of the dye is in this yarn. So I'm going to rinse it one or two more times and then we'll come back and wash the cotton. 
Let's add our cotton yarn to the rinse water. And up, what do we see immediately? We see some pink come out. I have a feeling that, you know, things like food coloring is only permanent on synthetic fibers and cotton when you don't want it to be. Uh, so when it lands on a favorite shirt or or something like that. But you can see that, you know, there is some color in here because the cotton is absorbent and soaked up some colored water. But, you know, we did not permanently add this color to the yarn. I expect that some will stick behind. And once again, I'm using, this time I'm using a fair amount of soap. But, you know, I think that this is going to take significantly more washing. Oh, look at, look at all of that bleeding. And this is still just in cool water. Acid dyes in general, um, even commercial acid dyes, look at all that color, will bleed um, in warm water. But if you wash cold, they um, will stick behind. But here, you know, I'm not even, I haven't even used warm water yet to, to check this. It's just, the color is coming out. Again, I expect that there will be a little bit that is stained permanently. There's a reason why you want to frequently treat stained things in cool water, um, because you don't want you don't want to get oh man, but even like this, you know, you don't want to accidentally set the color. But I can tell you that this is going to take. A lot of washing. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna keep rinsing this, and I'll let you know um, if anything notable happens. I'm not gonna count the number of rinses that I I do with this, but let's just say that I'm sure this is gonna take a little while. Let's add some more soap. See if that can help things move along. I almost should have some wool yarn in here to soak up this color that's coming out. And this, my friends, is why we don't dye cotton with Kool-Aid. Oh my goodness, you can barely see that there's any pink left in this at all. And we're still getting some color bleeding. I've been leaving the yarn to soak in the dye bath at times, and almost all of the color has come out of this yarn. I wanted to try this experiment because I frequently get asked if these techniques will work on cotton. And since in my FAQ video we saw the little bit of staining that didn't rinse out, I really wanted to look at this and be able definitively to say, okay, maybe you'll get 1% of the color, 10% of the color. I mean, I would say this is closer to a 1%. Um, there is really not much color left of this at all. But I'm still going to try to get the water to clear. I think we're close. I think that this yarn will have a subtle pink shade to it in the end. And I know for a fact that I will be over dyeing this yarn with some type of dye that will work great on cellulose yarns. Here is the finished dry yarn. And what do you see, or better yet, what do you not see in the cotton on the left? This yarn has the barest, barest, barest hint of pink in it. There really is not a lot of color. In fact, I had to put some undyed yarn on top of it so you could even get a sense of what the stain is like. This, my friends, is why you don't dye cotton yarn with food coloring. You might get a stain. We have the very, very lightest blush, but it is nothing compared with what we have on the wool on the, on the right. And we added the wool substantially after we added the cotton. 
and I would say even the patches of wool that have the least amount of color have more color than the cotton. And washing the wool was basically nothing. There was no bleeding, you know, it just sort of right away we were able to wash and hang it up. The cotton, we had to do a lot of soaking and a lot of washing to stop the pink from coming out of the fiber. The yarn, it looked like the yarn had taken up some color at first because it's essentially a sponge and it held on to the, the pink liquid, looking like we had some color saturation. Obviously, you are more than welcome to try this for yourself, but I 100% do not recommend trying to dye cotton yarn with food coloring. There are so many different dyes that you can use to get really vibrant, fun colors on these cellulose fibers. If you would like to learn some fun ways to dye cotton yarns, I have a link to a cotton dyeing playlist in the video description. Just like I love to explore different ways to dye wool yarns, I have been working on many different ways to dye cotton yarn as well, so you should really check it out. You have not seen the last of this blush cotton yarn. I plan to use it in the future in another video because I think that it is ready to take on some more color. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.